here's the setup that we're going to use to see how much current the extension cords can handle. And if we just sort of follow it through, all our power comes from this extension cord and it goes to this variac where I can adjust the voltage and hence the current. And then over here we have this cable that's been broken out and that's so that we can attach an ammeter to it just to make sure we're not overloading the variac. And the variac gets connected to this adapter which allows me to attach the welder to 120 volts coming out of the variac. And, and then, well, here's the welder itself, a vintage 240 volt Miller welder that's rated for about 225 amps, so it has more than enough current capability for what we're doing. And the high current output of that welder comes around and goes to this receptacle here where we can plug in all sorts of things. And to short the extension cord, I have this little adapter which is threaded through the current meter, the ammeter. And um, that's how we're going to do our experiments. I have here, and hopefully you can see it, a vintage extension cord. Looks like something from probably the 70s or 80s or maybe even 60s. Maybe even 60s because it doesn't have a polarized outlet at all and all the newer ones would. And the first thing we'll do is put our shorting adapter into the extension cord socket and it really does not fit very snugly. It's, it's fairly loose so I would expect perhaps this socket to melt and we will plug the other end of the extension cord into our socket here and now we will power up things and see what happens. We'll try our 22 amps. I'm not getting anything at all. Could that be because this is, yes, you see, this is so bad that it wasn't even connecting. So let's get this down to somewhere around what looks like 22 amps. And maybe what we'll do is measure the voltage on our electrical outlet. And you can see that we've got around 0.4 of a volt. Well, we've actually lost that. Yeah, this connector here is so, in fact, it's already, it's even sparking. That's a better one on the side here. And for 22 or 23 amps, going through the extension cord. We're getting somewhere, well now it looks like about three volts across the terminals of the extension cord. So three volts times our 22 or 23 amps produces somewhere around 65 or 70 watts. So what that means is there is 70 watts of power being dissipated anywhere from the plug of this extension cord, which is getting hot, to the extension cord itself, to the connector on this extension cord. And I'm actually gonna just reduce the voltage a bit because it's current's going up. And um, we've got still the same amount of power being dissipated in our loop over here. So this thing is getting awfully hot and you could certainly imagine that if you had this under, say, some curtains, um, you're starting to be getting close to the risk of plastic melting and fires starting. So we'll just give it a bit more at 23 or 22 amps. 
I'm certainly beginning to smell a hot plastic smell. Wow, that is getting really very hot. And it's probably not, at least for this short period of time, going to do anything dramatic. So now let's crank up the current to 30 amps to mimic what would happen if you plugged this extension cord into a 20 amp socket like you get in modern kitchens these days and decided to plug in a kettle and a toaster at the same time. And again, even though it has a 20 amp circuit breaker, it could take up to half an hour for the circuit breaker to blow. So here we go. We're now at 30 amps and close to 4 volts. Not quite, but to keep things simple, we said 4 volts. Well, that's somewhere around 120 watts, maybe because it's a bit less, it's 110 or so. But we've now got a significant amount of heat coming out of the cable. And... Um, Let's just give it a few minutes and see if anything dramatic happens. I mean, I'd really like, oh, I can already feel this plug melting. It is getting very, very soft. So this is clearly all thermoplastic, whereas this yellow stuff does not appear to be thermoplastic, or at least not as low temperature thermoplastic as the rest of it but this thing well if this was 120 volts I would be afraid to touch it because I'd be afraid it would fall apart in my hands and um, give me a good shock so let's just see if we can pull that out if it comes apart I wouldn't be surprised oh look at that Look at that, the plug, the plug here is melting. Isn't that incredible? The plug is melting. It's so hot. And you can see some of the, the white plug material. So I'm just going to plug it back in here. Again, using my gloves. Now one thing I'm going to do is throw out these extension cords when I'm done because after stressing them like this I wouldn't dare use them with any household voltage anymore because you never know what's gone wrong and they really are as time goes on becoming more and more of a fire hazard so if you try this at home and I wouldn't recommend it um, don't reuse any extension cord that's been pushed to its limit so maybe we should inspect the receptacle one more time and see if it's still melting. And yeah, look at that, eh? Oh, look at this. So you see, this plug at this point has essentially completely melted apart. So even in the short time we're using it, this plug has really come apart and you could sort of imagine that in a few more minutes with this insulating conductor material melting um, you could easily end up with a short between these two wires and um, the one good thing about that would be is if that short happens quickly enough the circuit breaker would at least at that point trip and hopefully stop anything bad from happening. So this certainly shows why you should never plug an extension cord like this and on a more general rule any type of extension cord in a 20 amp circuit. They used to be rare but now you find them more and more in kitchens and while it's a great idea you can generally plug a toaster and a kettle into one outlet the downside of that is if you plug one of these cords into one outlet, you are asking for a fire if you plug something into them.
I'm guessing this plastic melting is the result of heat coming from here and here as opposed to from the inside of the socket. So that actually says a lot for the socket. Okay, so we'll continue the experiment a bit. I'm not sure. I guess I'm wondering if this is going to fall apart at all. It is certainly on the verge. In fact, you can sort of see it retaining shape and it sure smells like hot, hot plastic. And again, I sure wouldn't want something flammable touching this or a bunch of these cables together to get even hotter. So I think this is probably going to survive the half hour, but we should be a little bit more daring. And to do that, I'm going to move the cable away from the, oh, look at that. I don't know if you can see it. It's actually smoking here now. So we're beginning to get the signs of a fire. It's not quite a fire yet, but there certainly is smoke coming out from there. And I can't actually tell, and you probably can't see it at all, whether that's coming from inside the, the receptacle or the outside here, but there's certainly whiffs of smoke. Let's just see if we see that smoke again. Ah, uh, there is some, but maybe one needs a different vantage point. Ah, you can just barely see it on camera. We should now simulate what would happen if our circuit breaker was even worse. And if our circuit breaker was even worse, it might not even trip at 30 amps. Let's assume it's an old breaker and there was a series of breakers, I think in the States, that turned out to be very poor at tripping and caused a lot of home fires. Let's crank this up now to perhaps 50 amps. So at 50 amps, we're somewhere around six or seven volts. So we're somewhere, if we were to say seven amps, we're close to 350 watts being dissipated everywhere. You can sure see the smoke coming out of there. Oh, and it's also coming out of the other connector. And in fact, the other connector just failed. And we'll just zoom out so you can see that. So, Look, the wire is now actually melting. Oh, in fact, look at those bubbles. <coughs> and that's the smoke from the wire. Look at that. The wire, <coughs> the wire is melting. That's definitely bad news. And interestingly enough, I'm not getting any more current through this. So what's happened is somewhere along here, the wire has shorted and is now getting considerably more current. Um, <coughs> boy, that's toxic fumes. Let's see what the current is. If I plug the ammeter around here. Okay, we're getting <coughs> about 60 amps. And sure enough, you can see how fumes like that could kill a person. We're at 60 amps. The cable is <coughs> burning. Really quite a horrendous mess. And it would be burning even worse if this was attached to 240, or I should say 120 volts in North America. So that's the first extension cord that is burning up. We should perhaps try it 
with one more. And what we'll do is we'll just use the same receptacle we've been using before and plug our shorting thing into the extension cord here. And you can tell this is newer because it's a polarized plug. This pin is bigger than this pin. And does this still even fit? Yes, it does. And once again, we'll crank up the current to first 22 amps. And let's just see what happens. Once again, the house wire here is warm, but it's nothing like the warmth we're getting on the extension cord. Now, what you can't imagine is if you had a bunch of these bundled together, and I once lived in a house where whoever wired it bundled a few dozen 14-2 and 12-2 wires together into a big giant size bundle that big, and it was an electrically heated house, and I did have the thing, the thing inspected, inspected by both a building inspector and an electrician, and the recommendation was, well, the first thing we got to do is unbundle that group of wires, and we did. And apparently it wasn't strictly to code in the early days, but that was when people used a lot le less electricity. These days you really don't want wires bundled together like that because you can just imagine how much heat would occur if you had a dozen electrical heaters each drawing 20 amps or something like that. Interestingly, the white plastic has a different hot plastic smell to it than the others. I'm thinking it might be because it's white and it might be because it's a much newer plastic just based on the polarized plug. So it'll be interesting to see if it handles the higher current any better. Certainly getting hot is it, it's certainly becoming more pliable, but Certainly no sign of the issues we've had on the other one. How's this connection? It's actually surprisingly good. I um, would have thought this would be much worse, but it's, it's quite good. I've never trusted these types of connections in these sort of molded plastic outlets, for lack of a better term. Um, I've always thought having molded plastic, thermoplastic, right next to the um, probably somewhat thin contacts is just not a good idea because it doesn't allow heat to dissipate and it is a plastic that does soften and in theory would make the pressure between the contacts and the pins on the plug um, get reduced as the thing overheated and consequently raise the potential resistance and make it heat up even more in a bit of a runaway effect. Interestingly, if I switch this shorting adapter from this to that location, the total current through the thing stays about the same, which means the contact is actually pretty much the same. And it's actually not that hot, so it's surprisingly good. In fact, based on the heating of the cord, I'm beginning to think that these contacts are, in fact, not the most likely source of a problem in the beginning. And I'm amazed, I really am amazed how good these are, which um, shows you what I know, or more importantly, shows you what type of tests these would have had to survive. Well, we're probably around the 15 minute mark now, and I'm not detecting much of a change, um, meaning we've reached pretty much a steady state situation. And this cord is actually doing quite admirably at 20 amps, way beyond what you should ever be putting on this cord. So let's try and abuse it even more, and we will crank things up to 30 amps now. So there we are. We're now at 30 amps. Let's measure the voltage across our system. And we're somewhere around 2.66 volts. So that's somewhere probably around 80 watts is being dissipated in the system. 
So I'm just looking and I don't see any current rating listed on this extension gourd, but I know why it's doing so well, and that's because you can't read it, but both of these extension cords are Noma cords, and my experience is the Noma brand cords of any kind are generally among the best. Now, I didn't realize they made light-duty lap cords like this, but clearly it's excellent quality. I mean, we're doing an overload now that's probably more than three times the rated current. I mean, I'm guessing this thing is rated for something like 8 amps. And um, we're pushing 30 amps through it, and it still has not melted, and it should never have been plugged into a 20 amp circuit anyway, so it would certainly survive very nicely under most conditions in a 15 amp circuit, even though it's getting way too hot for, for comfort. Oh, I'm beginning to get some smoke. I just saw a little bit of smoke. I seem to be coming from this area here. In fact, I'm seeing some smoke from around here, maybe over here, where you've got this sort of bundling, which would, is making it very hot. That's actually a good part of the experiment because this, you know, could easily happen at the home. Somebody's bundled them up to get them out of the way or shoved them under the couch. Well, it's interesting, at 22 amps, the worst we would hope to ever experience on a standard 15 amp circuit, no problem, although it was hot. At 30 amps from a 20 amp circuit, we're now certainly once again well into the danger zone. But so far, surviving way better than that other extension cord or power cord. How is the plug doing? Plug has still survived. That's really quite incredible. I mean, it survived well enough that I can plug it back in. The other ones had sort of disintegrated by this point. I'm actually so impressed with this. I'm going to keep this, this second copy of the same cord because that's really an excellent extension cord. I think we're going to let this run for another 15 minutes and see if it survives. Because if it does, that means this is an incredible extension cord, not something that I was planning to prove with this test. We're about two minutes away from the half hour point, meaning this cord has been getting 30 amps for half an hour. This is remarkable. It certainly... There are whiffs of what look like smoke coming off it, but it's really more like off-gassing. I'm actually flabbergasted at how good this thing is surviving. It's clearly a modern cord. It's clearly using modern plastics. And it's amazing how well the plug and its built-in receptacle are surviving, although they're getting too hot for me to even touch. So I think what we'll do is I'm going to put on my welding gloves and let's just see how they have survived. How's this doing? You know, it's doing just fine. There's no sign of visible damage. So we'll plug that back in. There we go. Let's look at the plug over here. It's also, you know, it's soft. It's certainly getting soft, but it's certainly not falling apart. That is absolutely incredible. So, to um, do justice to this extension cord, I think we'll crank it up to maybe 50 amps. See how long it takes before 50 amps ruins it. There's certainly more smoke coming from it now. Let's look at the voltage that would be going across the terminals of the cord. I guess it helps if we turn on the voltmeter. We're only seeing two volts. 
That's surprising. Oh, and now at 50 amps, you can see the thermoplastic is in fact breaking up and the cord has shorted. So we were very close to our limit at 30 amps and going to 50 amps. Well, that just put this cord over the edge. It's completely burning up here now and probably shorting there. In fact, what I'm going to do is try unplugging the shorting thing over here and see if that drops the current at all. No, the current <coughs> is now continuing. We do have a short in the extension cord, but it was remarkable how long it lasted. Oh, look, and you can see how this plastic is now completely coming apart. And, well, that's really the end of that test. 50 amps, it's now up to 55. We'll cut it down a bit. That was really asking way too much of this extension cord. Um, but, boy, what a fantastic cord that is. That is just incredible. So one final really destructive test. Let's see what would happen if the circuit breakers in your breaker panel failed. And most breaker panels today are 200 amps, but way more current can come through them if the breakers fail and there's a short. And what I've done is I've attached this, well, directly to the output of the 200 amp arc welder. And I'm guessing that those copper wires and the receptacle are gonna go up in smoke when I activate it, so. Let's see what happens. Look at that. So that's the result of a completely uncontrolled overcurrent effect. I couldn't find another pristine extension cord and I didn't want to wreck the really two good Noma ones that I have left now that I know how good they are. So what I did find though was this remnant of some sort of an appliance or extension cord. I don't know where it came from, but what I did is I stripped the ends off here and has a good plug on it. So we'll plug it in here and we will attach the other plug terminal to our welder and well, Let's see what happens. Now this is not the best connection here, but it'll probably weld itself together before the whole cord goes up in smoke. So let's try this. And well, here goes. And it sure did, look at that. Wow, that was a very nice destructive test. One thing that's interesting is the nature of the smoke. It is a much blacker smoke than from the other cords, which was more of a whiter smoke. So it probably has something to do with the different plastics that were involved. And that, boys and girls, is why you should always have working circuit breakers or fuses in your house. And the unfortunate thing that happened in the old days is a fuse would blow and people would just put in a bigger fuse. And if they picked one that was too big, well, that's what would happen. And that's the end of that demonstration. I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.